Israel has been the talk of the town for a while now, and there are a few reasons why. These reasons are creating shockwaves in the religious communities. What's causing all the commotion between the people of Israel? What's Israel's stand about the things going on there? Join us as we take you through a plethora of religious and political reasons that are causing problems in Israel's communities. What you see on the screen right now is known as the Holy Land. Yes, this is Jerusalem, a place that all the three Abrahamic religions consider sacred. Deep within the ancient walls of Jerusalem lies a sacred mountaintop whispered to be the very spot where God once gathered dust to breathe life into Abraham, the first man. This is the same place where Abraham's unwavering faith towards God was tested as he prepared to sacrifice his beloved son, Isaac. Centuries later, the wise King Solomon, adorned in splendor and guided by divine wisdom, raised the first temple of the Jews upon this celestial stage around 1000 BC. Its majestic presence radiated with the devotion of a nation until the mighty forces of the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar ravaged the land, reducing the sacred sanctuary to dust and exile. As generations unfolded, the unbreakable spirit of the Jewish people prevailed. Upon their return from banishment under the watchful eye of Herod, the Jewish people built the second temple. This place is exactly where Jesus Christ lashed out against the money changers who defiled the religious place. But the winds of fate shifted once again when the Roman general Titus unleashed his wrath upon the Jewish rebels, leaving a scorched earth and smoldering ruins where the temple once stood. Jesus had once warned about the temple being destroyed. This event, known as the Olivet Discourse, as it took place on the Mount of Olives, east of Jerusalem. This event was recorded in three books of the New Testament. They were Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21. When Jesus' disciples marveled at the grandeur and beauty of the temple complex, in response, Jesus prophesied that not one stone would be left upon another and that the temple would be completely destroyed. He also warned of the signs and tribulations that would precede this event, including the arrival of false messiahs, wars, earthquakes, and persecution. Historically, the fulfillment of Jesus' prophecy occurred in AD 70 when the Roman general Titus besieged and destroyed Jerusalem. The siege of Jerusalem marked the end of the Second Temple period. However, the Temple Mount is sacred, not just to the Jews. In the footsteps of great civilizations like Babylonians, Greeks, Persians, and Romans, some others also conquered Jerusalem like the early Muslims, Crusaders, Mamluks, and the Ottomans, each have taken their turn as custodians of this hallowed ground. Among Muslims, the Temple Mount is called Haram al-Sharif, a sacred place. A mosque called Al-Aqsa stands there now, where once stood the Second Temple. This is where they believe Prophet Muhammad to have ascended to the Divine Presence, mounted upon a celestial steed. Or this is where Muhammad made his night journey from Mecca to Jerusalem before rising to heaven. Al-Aqsa Mosque is the third most holy site in Islam, after the cities of Mecca and Medina. However, tensions between the Jewish and Islamic community are at a peak, as both of these communities consider the Temple Mount crucial according to their religious beliefs. But who is in control of the area now? After Israel's victory in the 1967 Six-Day War, Jerusalem's old city, including the Al-Aqsa compound, came under Israeli control. As part of the post-war agreements, Jordan was entrusted with the custodianship of the Holy Hilltop site. To oversee its management, a trust called the Waqf was appointed. Under the current arrangement, Jews and individuals of other religions are granted access to the Al-Aqsa compound during specific regulated hours. However, they are prohibited from engaging in prayer within the compound. The status quo has been arranged and Israeli police are always on the lookout for lawbreakers. Even though strict police protection is given to the area, Palestinian worshippers often rebel and conduct prayers here, which often causes violence to break out. However, something interesting is happening right now. As we all know by now, the arrangements for building the Third Temple are underway. And for this very purpose, the Jews are trying everything they could to pave the way for the arrival of the Messiah. 
In a spectacle that had both Jews and Gentiles buzzing with excitement, five red heifers made their grand entrance into Israel last September. But why all the commotion? Well, it turns out that these crimson-coated bovines hold a special significance for some, as they're believed to play a crucial role in the construction of the third Jewish temple. Now, don't go expecting that these red heifers can be seen by anyone. They're far too important to be parading around like celebrities for people to see. They're currently residing in a top secret, undisclosed location in Israel where their safety and well-being are being closely guarded and monitored. However, there are plans in motion to give these red heifers the best treatment they deserve. Sometime in the near future, they'll be transported to a visitor center in Shiloh. But why specifically Shiloh? Shiloh just happens to be the spot where the Lord's tabernacle once stood for nearly 400 years. But what are these red heifers for? The Book of Numbers explains that the ashes of the red heifer are used to purify priests for their service in the temple. The Book of Numbers, chapter 19, 1 through 5, says this about them. Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, This is the ordinance of the law which the Lord has commanded, saying, Speak to the children of Israel. They bring you a red heifer without blemish, in which there is no defect, and on which a yoke has never come. You shall give it to Eleazar, the priest, that he may take it outside the camp, and it shall be slaughtered before him. Its offal shall be burned, for the water of purification. It is for purifying from sin. The red heifers that have been brought to Jerusalem are between one and a half and two years old. They hold great importance as they must reach a ripe age of three years to fulfill the ceremony as described in the Bible. During this period, they must remain unblemished, not a single white or black hair to be found, meeting the meticulous requirements set forth. For this momentous occasion, the chosen location must be none other than the Mount of Olives, offering a vantage point that grants a direct view of the hollowed grounds where the temple once stood and the land east of the Temple Mount, acquired 12 years ago, perfectly aligns with these exacting criteria. A rabbi named Yitzhak Mamo owns the land of the Mount of Olives. Him, along with a group called Uvni Jerusalem, are trying their level best to preserve Israel's history and are working to educate all future generations. In a year and a half, when the red heifers are ready for the sacrifice, they will be brought here for the ceremony and this will be the first step towards the building of the Third Temple. Also, the Temple Institute has prepared nine priests who are pure since birth. This means that they were born at home and not at the hospital like everyone else. Priests have to be born at their homes to be considered pure. Also, these nine priests are prohibited from entering or even going near the premises of any cemetery or any other place that may make them impure or unworthy for the ritual. They're waiting keenly for the day when the red heifer and the land is ready. This means waiting a year and a half. But will the Muslims let this happen so easily? A Jewish interfaith initiative had been launched recently that states that the Jewish temple can be built without destroying the Dome of the Rock that lies right there now. The Islamic tradition reveres the Dome of the Rock, a magnificent structure erected in 691 AD as the very spot from which the Prophet Muhammad ascended to the heavenly realms. Meanwhile, Jewish tradition harks back to Mount Moriah, now concealed beneath the Dome of the Rock as the sacred site where the temple once stood. For centuries, the prevalent notion among Jewish adherents held that the destruction of the Dome of the Rock was necessary for the temple to be built there. However, in 2007, a thought-provoking article was published in Tehumen, a highly influential journal of Jewish law where he proposed that a prophet within the Jewish doctrine who wields extraordinary authority will possess the discretion to specify the location of the temple, regardless of any differing Jewish tradition. This means that the temple could be built on the present or on an expanded temple mount. By doing this, peaceful coexistence would prevail, allowing for the proximity of the dome as well as other places of worship, such as the Al-Aqsa Mosque and neighboring Christian shrines. Nevertheless, both Muslims and Jews have expressed resistance to this initiative. Sheikh Abdullah Nimar Darwish, founder of the Islamic movement in Israel, dismissed the debate, emphasizing that the decision lies solely with the advent of the Mahdi, the Islamic equivalent of Messiah. He also warned against any premature efforts to rebuild the temple before the Mahdi emerges. He cautioned everyone by saying, 
As long as there is a Muslim alive, no Jewish temple will be built on the Al-Haram al-Sharif. The status quo must be maintained. Otherwise, there will be bloodshed. This means that building a third temple would not be an easy feat. The future of the third temple and the Al-Aqsa Mosque remains uncertain. What will happen to the Temple Mount? Will the Jews be able to start the construction of the third temple? What do you think? Comment your thoughts below. If you liked our video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We'll be back with more interesting updates.